The Alex Gleason map 100% proves that debunkers of flat earth are schizophrenics. Now, not all Globers are schizophrenics, but debunkers of flat earth are 100% schizophrenics. They're just trying to win an argument, and they're actually even going against the scientific community. The Alex Gleason map is patented, and it's a map. And it says on the map, it's scientifically and practically accurate. Scientifically and practically accurate. And it has a patent. Where does it have a patent? The United States of America, England, Canada, France, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, the patent offices of those places say it is scientifically and practically accurate. Okay, so let's look at what the Gleason map is. Is it just a projection of the globe? That's what debunkers do. First they say it doesn't work and the flat earth doesn't have a model and the flat earth doesn't have a map. And we show them a patented map. And then they say on the map it says it is a projection of the globe. And that is true. He did say it is a projection on the globe. Has the globe ever been used to navigate? The globe came out in 1492. Before 1492, people were using aqua-distant maps where you take a center point and you draw lines out from that center point based off of a plane. Let me read to you the definition of a AE map, a uh, azumiel aqua-distant map from a uh, geography surveying website. The Azumiel production plots the surface of the earth using a flat plane. So we have a theory that we have a globe. So before 1492, there was Eratosthenes, he said, we have a theory that we have a globe. In 1492, Columbus used flat maps to go and explore the world. Other people had explored the world, and they used flat maps, and those maps are documented. And in some, in some cases, those maps are patented. There were Mercator maps. Mercator took uh, maps of the North Pole, where he put the North uh, Pole, the magnetic mountain in the, in the middle of the Earth, and he projected straight lines out from that um, center point. His maps are patented. Now, his other map um, is then rolled out, and it doesn't work very well. He has North and South America on one page, Europe and Africa on another page, and Asia on another page. And if you want to look at how things are in relation to other things, it map doesn't do any justice. You can't use that map. So in World War II, they used the AE map. They used Gleason's map. This is what you guys don't understand. His map is the map that all other maps come from because his map's the most accurate. And schizophrenics can't handle this. So then they want to say that the map is inaccurate. But the scientific community says the map is accurate. It's the most accurate map. Aqualescent maps, aquadistant maps, AE maps, Gleason maps, flat earth maps, taking a center point and drawing straight lines out from it is the most accurate map. I don't have to be a topographer to know this. All I have to do is go and look into what the mainstream scientists say, the mainstream topographers, and they go, yeah, you are correct. But it is a projection of the globe, and I say you're assuming it's a globe. And he goes, well, yeah, of course I am because we have the pictures from NASA. Why would they lie? Okay, that's a whole other issue. But the map over here over my shoulder, that's a flat piece of paper. Do we navigate with that map or do we navigate with ball maps? We navigate with that map. So is it a theory that that is a flat map? No, that's an objective truth. Is it a theory that it came from a globe? Yes, because we never navigate with it. We don't use globes. We use two fixed points and then off of those fixed points you get your triangulation if you were using celestial navigation. Celestial navigation uses plane trigonometry first. It's called plane sailing. You won't find anybody in this world that can navigate without two fixed points, without using dead reckoning. You'll ask uh, celestial navigators if it's possible and they might say yes, but they will never be able to find one person that can actually do it. They need two fixed points, and you can't prove that those two fixed points are curved. You just can't. You have to use plane trigonometry first. Anyways, the Gleason map admittedly was said it was a projection of the globe in order to get the patent because the scientific community assumes we live on a globe. This is true. So he did do a, he did do a little trick to you guys to 
to get the map to get the patent of the map be owned by flat earthers flat earthers own the patent of all maps that make all maps all maps come from a projection of a flat plane prove otherwise you've never proved that you can navigate with a ball you can navigate with a flat plane if you ask anybody what the uh best maps of the world are they'll say they're uh ae maps the best map for world maps now on his map he also has more land south victoria land he's got a bunch of other land off of australia there's a whole bunch of land on here he had a guy from england help him uh christopher blackenheath who was a part of uh robotham's zetetic society Ro uh gleason was as well but he had to keep that secret in order to get his patent and then he got his patent. He got two. He got one for the sun clock, which proves that the sun is always in the sky. If you follow the meridian lines of the sun on this map, it will show you that the sun's always in the sky. You can follow it. You can follow it with airplanes. Um, and debunkers of flat earth will make up flights. They literally made up a flight from Australia to Johannesburg, showing anybody get on that plane. They've never shown. They, Google isn't on it. They did uh, fake the moon landings after all. And now they're faking this flight. You can't get on that flight. They fake it. Yes, there's people at Google that are trying to hide the fact that the Earth is flat. This is true. The schizophrenics first say that map is inaccurate. It's patented by the scientific community. It's patented. The map is accurate. I don't have to prove it to you. Your own team says it's accurate. And then they use it in other instances. So I'm going to read to you what they said on the World War II map. What they said on the top left and the top right corners. This is very interesting. Okay. It just reiterates what I said. You have a theory that it's a globe. It, the globe isn't used for navigation. The flat map is. And it's a projection of the globe in Gleason's own words. And he said it's a perfect projection. It's a perfect distortion. He distorted Antarctica as a 365 degree ice wall and ran lines out from the center point, from the center plane. It's a projection onto a plane that the globe is used for anything practically. The globe is just for decoration. The globe is just for a sigh up in your mind that the earth is a sphere. There's just no proof of it that it's a sphere. It's globe earth theory. And most of the scientific community won't argue this. They'll say, yes, anything that can work on a globe, yes, can work on a flat plane. And then I say, you're assuming it's a globe. Your gravity experiments, your Cavendish experiments, hogwash. Your pendulums that are powered by motors in your museums, hogwash. Your snipers don't calculate for spin. They just don't do it. They just don't do it. Airplanes don't have to do it. Airplanes would have to calculate for the curve. They don't, and they admit they don't. Snipers, they say they do in one video. If there's one video, you'll have someone saying uh, they calculate for curvature. Every other sniper goes, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. We calculate for velocity. So let me read. So they assume that it's a globe. But then they never give you any proof. They don't ever navigate with the ball. Take New York City, for example. It's 30 miles. Uh, it's a 30-mile uh, flat island. Okay. Use a globe to navigate New York City. Use a globe map. Use a ball. Project New York City into a ball and navigate with it. Very difficult. Won't be able to do it. Okay. The Global War Strategy Map. Much of the strategy of this war is based upon modern airplane. Its speed, size, and dependability permit military operations across an impassable to surface transport. The great land areas of this world are grounded upon the North Pole. The shortest routes between many of the world's great centers lie across the polar regions. Conventional maps do not bring out these facts. They do not show the transpolar relationship of the continents. In many ways, they are actually misleading. Hmm, maybe it's because we don't live on a ball. Now here's the spin. Here's how they assume that it's a ball. Explanation of the projection. This map is made on the North Polar Azumiel Equidistant Projection. This means that the world has been projected on a plane. Transit to the North Pole with the parallels of latitude as latitudes as concentric circles equally spaced from the pole outward. The meridians of longitude are straight lines. The map has true direction, or a zoomulith, from the pole, and also a true distance from the pole. Hmm, okay, a true distance for a true map to resemble reality, that we live on a flat plane. 
So you use a flat plane map. Again, the definition of azumiel is the azumiel projection plots the surface of the earth using a flat plane. So first, the debunkers say that's impossible and it doesn't work. And then we read to them situations of them doing it and it says not only does it work, it works better and the other maps are misleading. Okay, so it works and you have a fake flight from New Zealand to Johannesburg to try to discredit it and then every other situation they go, no, it works. You guys are schizophrenics, man. You're schizophrenics and you're going to prove that the earth is flat to the whole world by going against your own scientific community. It's game, set, match. The earth is flat. The map is flat. You don't navigate on a ball. You navigate on a flat piece of paper. It would be like me saying the basketball court is flat and the ball is round. And you come back and say, no, the ball, the, the court is round. And I say, but we use a flat court. And you go, I know, but it's just a projection from a ball. And I say, show me proof. Show me any situation where we use a globe to navigate. One situation where we use a globe to navigate. Not on a flat piece of paper. And then they go, oh, I'll show you a flat piece of paper. And then I'll navigate with the flat piece of paper. And then the words say it came from a globe. They're schizophrenics. They can't understand words and actions. Find me a circle ball and navigate with it. Navigate with the circle ball. They're schizophrenics. They can't seem to understand this. And they go, it's a projection from the globe. My government told me it was a projection from the globe. He said it was a, and it's distorted. It's a perfect distortion because it's the only map that works. I'm done arguing with schizophrenics. I'm done arguing with you guys. If you want to look into it, you can look into it. The earth is flat. The map is flat. And guess what? The United States of America, Britain, France, Denmark, and everywhere else gave them a patent. A flat earther, the man from Buffalo, patented flat earth. Deal with it. The earth is flat. The man from Buffalo proved it. And you use our map. You use the flat earth map. So for the final time, the last time I will argue this with the bunkers of Flat Earth. Flat Earth came first. Then the globe came out, and they didn't use the globe to navigate. They used a flat map, an AE map. Then there was all these theories, and it said theories in their book that said it might not be a flat plane. And then... They still use the flat map and they still use the AU map. Then in 1892, a flat earther patented the map by projecting your globe out onto a map. He said it was a flat earth map. He made a deal with the government and said, I will admit that it's a projection of the globe. If it's a globe, that's a theory. You still have theory. It's globe earth theory. You use flat pieces of paper that take projections onto a plane. Go navigate with your ball. Navigate with a ball. Navigate with a sphere that's tilted. Take those globes they sell in the stores and go sail around the world with them, please.